Yo, what's up? It's Higa Monster, and all the animals are here in Vegas. Welcome to the cage. We all have reasons why we started training, reasons why we continue to train. If your reason is because you want to get on a bodybuilding stage and win a trophy, you should probably just give up. Bodybuilding is about self-improvement. It's about accomplishing a goal. It's about living a certain lifestyle because you believe in that lifestyle. Um, for me, I was always overweight as a kid. And I first stepped foot in a gym at 18 years old because I had lost so much weight uh, from running and starving myself that I wasn't happy with how I looked and I wanted to put on some muscle. And <laughs> 10 years later, that's still my goal. I don't train because I wanna be Mr. Olympia. I never, it was never my goal to become a pro bodybuilder. Um, every time I walk in the gym, I walk in there and I wanna kill it. You know, I wanna train hard. And um, it's, it's a philosophy that's continued to serve me well. Now, a lot of times people will talk about the importance of nutrition or the importance of genetics or the importance of training. And they'll say, well, you know, if you don't have, if you don't have the right genetics, forget it, you're never gonna be a good bodybuilder. Or they'll say, well, bodybuilding is 70% nutrition. So people will throw, throw things around and make it sound like, you know, one thing is more important than the other. Truth be told, to be a good bodybuilder, you need it all. Um, at the pro level, none of these guys would be where they are if they didn't have good genetics, if they didn't train hard, or if they didn't eat well. It takes everything. Um, there is no one part of it that can be missing. There are guys who have outstanding genetics, and maybe they get really far in the sport, but if they were more dedicated to their training or were more diligent with their diet, maybe they could have been Mr. Olympia. But for people who have all of it, you can go really far. Now, that's not to say that, um, you know, if you don't have the greatest genetics in the world that you cannot be a great bodybuilder. It that depends on how you define what it is to be a great bodybuilder. There are a lot of guys who maybe never turned pro or nobody ever heard of that are fantastic bodybuilders. And in my opinion, better bodybuilders than a lot of guys with, um, you know, pro cards or titles. Being a good bodybuilder is about improvement. It's about continuing year after year after year to continue to progress, to bust your ass day after day in the gym, to dedicate yourself and always be on your nutrition all the time. Bodybuilding, to me, is about being better than I was yesterday, last week, last month, last year, and my goal every time I get on stage is to be better than I was last time. Now, whether, you know, I, fortunately, I've had a really good run as a bodybuilder, I've had good uh, contest history, I've, I've won a lot of shows, but the shows that I didn't win, I didn't view as failure. Every time I've gotten on stage, I felt that I've been able to, dis to display improvement and for me, that was success. People ask me all the time if I get tired of training or eating or you know, doing all the things that it takes to you know, compete as a bodybuilder. You know, once, it's, once it's your job, it's different than you know, like when it was a hobby. For me, the key has been to trick myself into believing that this isn't my job, I don't do this as my career. When I go to the gym you know, with my training partner, it's just like it was back in high school. We go in, we're there to train hard, beat the hell out of each other, and um, it never gets old. Um, I wanna know if what questions you guys have. I'll answer anything in regard to nutrition, training, whatever. Give me some questions, guys. Come on, you guys were just talking to me before about, about bodybuilding and getting started. You got a question? When did I start bodybuilding? Competing or just training? I did my first competition at 23 years old. I had started training in high school. Um, I was probably like 14 or 15. I wouldn't know if I would call it training, <laughs> at least not compared to what I consider training now. 
but it's evolved every year. You know, what I did, um, what I was doing in 2007 to earn my, my pro card is a lot different than what I do now. What I did a year ago is different than what I do now. Bodybuilding is always about evolution. It's about evolving. It's about looking at every single thing you do, from your training to your nutrition to the lifestyle that you're leading and asking yourself how you can improve upon what you're doing to give yourself a better result. You know what I mean? You gotta analyze all the time. Um, you know, how can I change what I'm eating? How can I change, um, you know, how I'm living to get more out of what I do, you know, what I want as a bodybuilder. So yeah, I did my first show at 23 years old. I had been told many times as a team that I should compete, but I didn't feel ready. Um, and that's one of the first things I tell a lot of people is you have to feel ready. Competition is not the most, like I said before, is not what bodybuilding is about. Competition, at least in my mind, is simply a formality. We get on stage just to display the progress that we've worked so hard to achieve. Otherwise, I could just stay in the gym and train and train and train and, you know, try and get bigger and bigger, stronger, stronger. But every once in a while, we got to get in shape and see exactly, you know, what's ours, what we've, you know, what we've accomplished. And when I did my first show at 23, that was going to be the one and only show I ever did in my life. It's like, oh, I'm going to just do it one time and I'm going to stop. I just want to see what I look like in contest condition. So I went and I did that show. I competed as a heavyweight and I ended up winning the overall in a fairly competitive regional show in New York. So after that, it was like, oh, well, maybe I'll do one more. So I went to the Junior Nationals, and I ended up winning the Super Heavies and the overall. Then I was going to stop. I was, I was convinced I was going to stop. <laughs> and then I decided, uh, somebody said, well, you got to go to the Nationals. So I went, and I took second place. I said, well, shit, if I came that close, I got to do it one more time, and then I got my pro card. And then once you got your pro card, you can't stop then. So at each 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 step along the way, it was going to be it. Like, like I said, it hasn't been my lifelong goal to be a pro bodybuilder. And even at this stage, people say, well, I think you're going to be Mr. Olympia someday. I think you're going to be a Mr. Olympia. You're going to win it five times. You're going to do this. You're going to do that. And my response is, you know, maybe kind of lackluster, but it's really not that important to me. And I know that sounds crazy coming from somebody who's a pro bodybuilder, but like I said, first and foremost, my goal is always to improve and to be a better bodybuilder. Whatever happens, you know, as a byproduct of that, that's great. But if I could be Mr. Olympia um, tomorrow, but it meant that I'd get on stage and look worse than I did at my previous show, that's a failure. <laughs> no matter what, what, what title you win or what place, you know, you, you come in. There's guys that compete in shows all the time and maybe they're the only one in their class. And they say, well, I got first place. I have a trophy. That doesn't, what is, that means nothing, you know? Give me some questions. Nothing. <laughs> Come on, guys. What's my favorite animal supplement? Um, probably has to be just the regular good old animal pack. Um, falling, you know, in line with my philosophy that it's always basics first, you know, whether it's basic exercises in the gym, uh, eating basic whole food, you have to, you have to cover the bases. Look, there's certain things you need to do as a human being just to live, just to survive, right? You got to eat, drink, you have to breathe oxygen, you got to sleep. Right? There's four things you have to do just to get out of bed every morning. Now, if you're going to go on to do anything beyond simply just uh, sitting there and uh, breathing, you gotta, you got to do those four things well, right? So there's people, you'd be amazed how many people are out there and they say, well, I want to be a pro bodybuilder. And, you know, you look at their diet and it's terrible or they don't even take a multivitamin. You say, well, how could you, how could you possibly hope to go on to achieve something which is really kind of rare, you know, it's really kind of above and beyond when you don't even do the most basic fundamental things. Or people, they say, well, I want to um, back like Dorian Yates, but they won't deadlift or they won't, you know what I'm saying? It's always first things first. Um, you, you see it all the time, even in society. I go to the grocery store and 
people don't do a good job bagging my groceries. Now, if you ask anybody working in a grocery store, they would tell you that it's not their lifelong as aspiration to work in that grocery store. That one day would hope to do something more important and make more money and just to have a, have a, a better job. But the way I think about it, I'm saying to myself, well, if you can't even bag my groceries properly, what, what is it in life that you could hope to do more important or that, that pays more money, right? You have to do the most basic things first. And the same goes for bodybuilding. If, uh, you know, if you want to build a better body, you're not going to do it, um, you know, missing meals or training like shit. You have to do all the basic things. And if you're going to, and if you want to do something really great, you have to do those basic things really well. So think about what's most fundamental, master those things first, then worry about, you know, taking testosterone boosting products and, you know, all those things. question is, how does my off-season diet differ from my pre-contest diet in terms of, you know, my selection of, you know, carb carbohydrates, proteins, fats? This is a question that if you asked me a few years ago, it would have been a pretty dramatic difference between my off-season diet and my pre-contest diet. In the past, I would go wild in the off-season, eat a ton of calories, you know, a lot of it maybe wouldn't be as clean, you know, I'd eat a lot of pasta, bread, milk. And then, you know, I'd get up to something ridiculous like, you know, 315 pounds only to then drop, you know, 60, 70 pounds to compete. This last time around, my off-season diet, I actually was, I was eating, I believe, I was eating five meals in the off-season. And when I went to pre-contest, it was all the same food. Because what I found is my body works well on certain foods. There's no reason to change them off-season to pre-contest. If I feel good eating a baked potato, there's no reason I'm going to eat um, frosted flakes. I eat the same thing all year round, pretty much, you know, the, the, the foods that I choose. I like fish, I like chicken, beef, you know, all the, all the regular protein that everybody, you know, eats. And there's certain carbs that I like that sit well with me. They digest well for me. I like white rice, white potatoes. Um, I like a glass of orange juice in the morning. And I eat a lot of fruit. Pre-contest, I still, maybe minus the glass of orange juice, I eat all the same stuff. But I find that as I'm doing more cardio, um, as I am training more often in the off-season, I only train maybe four days a week. Pre-contest, I'll train five days plus cardio every day. I find that I have a need for more food and a greater amount of calories. So I'll go, last year I went from f uh, five meals to I was eating six meals, some days seven. So in the past, it was always eat a ton of food in the off season, then you start dieting, cut your calories. And that never ended up working well for me um, because I would just get smaller and my conditioning would suffer. Now, if I'm eating well all year round, I never get that out of shape. So when I go to start dieting and my, my metabolism is increasing from the cardio and the greater amount of training, I'm only able to eat more food. So now I'm eating more food my metabolism is higher from eating more food, and um, I'm doing more cardio, so now my metabolism is increased from that, versus other people where they'll say, well, um, I don't wanna do a lot of cardio, so I'm not gonna eat a lot of food. All you're gonna do by doing that is just screwing yourself, because you, when you eat less food, your metabolism goes downhill. And when you're not doing as much cardio, your metabolism is lesser also. You're better off eating more food, training harder, doing more cardio, and then your body's just burning, burning, burning. Um, but that's, that's what I found to work well for me. Do I ever train like a power lifter? Um, this, is, uh, this is something that I was just talking about with Sergeant Rock before. He said to me, he said, you know, did you used to power lift? And I said, no. He said, because you do a lot of things that power lifters do. And... Um, I think there's a lot of things from powerlifting that bodybuilders could borrow. If you look at the way Ronnie trained, I mean, Ronnie was a powerlifter. He did a lot of, you know, squatting, deadlifting, things that I think would benefit anybody's physique. I don't ever do, uh, you know, sets of three and four reps like maybe a powerlifter would do. Or, uh, you know, I, I don't think that the, that the setup of my training is like that of a powerlifter, but I do believe in compound movements. I believe in heavy weight. I think that 
even if, even if you had fantastic legs, legs that would allow you to maybe never squat again. You'd maybe say you don't need the squat to have awesome, to have legs that look like Tom Platt's. You should still squat. When you're getting ready for a contest or just training day to day, it's squatting, deadlifting, it's, it's those type of movements that make your whole body look good because they hit your nervous system so hard, they make your body release a whole cascade of hormones and getting ready for a show, dude, it's, yeah, the cardio is good, the cardio helps you get in shape, but it's training like that, a lot of deadlifts, a lot of squats, that's what makes dudes condition, that's what brings out hardness and condition in a physique. Because um, you're, you're burning all sorts of calories, you're gonna burn more calories doing a, a barbell squat than you are on a, on a Smith machine just stands to reason, just like you're going to burn more calories doing a standing military press than you would if you're sitting on a hammer strength. So the more muscles you can involve, the more calories you're going to burn, the more muscles you're going to hit. Give me some more questions. Good question. The question was, do I still eat dairy? Um, I don't have anything against dairy. I don't, I don't drink milk anymore. I find that when I do, I don't feel as, as good. Um, I do eat eggs, but you know, talking about things that contain lactose, you know, yogurt, milk, cheese, all that stuff, um, not really. I've gotten to a point where if, if things I don't, if, if eating something means I'm gonna step into the gym and if I go all out squatting, deadlifting, and my stomach's gonna feel upset, if I'm gonna feel like I'm gonna throw up, that's no good. Just the same, uh, you know, that, that reminds me. When people are trying to, you know, get as big as they can, and they're eating ridiculous amounts of food, so I eat every hour, I eat every two hours, how can you go and train like that? You get all that food in your stomach. If, if anything is gonna impede your ability to train as hard as possible, don't do it. You know, I don't care if it's, you know, eating, there's some days where, you know, I won't, I won't eat an hour before training, I'll go, I'll train, and then maybe I feel so beat after the workout, I don't have an appetite for another hour or two. That's fine, I don't force it down my throat. You know, your body will let you know if it's hungry. Just think back to, you know, when you went through puberty. You didn't have to think about, you know, your next meal or how often you were gonna eat or how much you were gonna eat. Your body told you, I'm hungry, feed me, and you ate and you grew. It, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't change now. Your body will still tell you what it wants, what it likes, what it doesn't like. Whoever, somebody over here had a question. I'm sorry? Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. The question was with the ever increasing size of you know, the, the pro physique or the standard on the Olympia stage, you see the size of bodybuilders increasing all the time. Do I feel pressure to change you know, what I do or to uh, you know, change how I look just to be competitive at that level? The question is no. <laughs> like I said before, I don't really, not that I don't, like I said, it's not, it hasn't been my dream to be Mr. Olympia. I'm never going, I'm not going to sacrifice what I want to look like or how I want to feel or do something that maybe I think is out of line with that just to win a trophy or to be that guy. And I would tell anybody else the same. You should all stay true to you know, what it is that you want and remember why you started training and don't ever do anything that's out of character with that. So if it meant the difference between being Mr. Olympia and not being Mr. Olympia, I'd much rather be comfortable with the way I look and the way I feel than compromise that if it meant winning, you know, a title such as that. I think that sometimes you have to show people what it is that they like. You could have a guy, I mean, I look at Phil, I, I look at Phil Heath and I think he looks damn good, right? People say, well, he's not big enough to be Mr. Olympia, he's got to get bigger. I'd be happy enough just looking like him, <laughs> you know? So sometimes too, the, the standard might be Jay Cutler, but Jay Cutler is Jay Cutler. You know what I mean? No, nobody else is gonna be 
Jay Cutler. So by the time you get done trying to look like Jay Cutler, somebody else, they, are, they already said, no, that guy looks better. We like his look. So you've already chased that. You've gotten to that, and they don't want that anymore. So from the beginning, you should always just do what you want to do or what you think looks right. If that's what's rewarded, so be it. If not, too bad. You know, just like anything else, you could always be proud that you did what you wanted to do. Give me some more questions. What's that? Off-season cardio? Question is off-season cardio. Um, in the past, I never ever did cardio in the off-season. It was always my mentality, well, if I'm trying to get as big as I can, why would I do cardio, which is going to just burn precious calories? Um, it's only, it's, it's only going gonna, only gonna to hinder my growth. Now, last year, I did quite a bit of cardio in the off-season, <clears throat> and I found that it helped my recovery. The fact that you get up every morning, hop on a treadmill, get your blood going, right? Think about it. Your blood is what carries all the nutrients. It's what dis helps your body discard of waste products. Blood flow is really, really important. And the more you get your blood pumping, the better your recovery is. So I found that the cardio, aside from keeping my metabolism higher and, and uh, improving my recovery, it also increased my appetite, and that was, that's obviously a plus because now I can eat more, now I'm recovering faster, you know what I mean? Everything's working together. It's one, you know, one big circle. So, and then as of recently, I haven't been doing any cardio, but I, uh, I just moved into a new house, so I do a lot of yard work. <laughs> and I think, I think manual labor is great too. Uh, people say, well, oh, but if you go, if you go and you uh, work in the yard all day, isn't that going to screw up your, uh, your workout? And that's how I always used to think. Now, you'd be amazed. If I go and I work outside all day, as long as I take breaks to drink a lot of water and eat enough food, when I go to the gym, I'm like a fucking maniac. It's like I had an eight-hour fucking warm-up. Um, it's good. Don't be afraid to, you know, go and do things. Oh, I, I, can't, I can't exert myself because it's going uh, to screw up my workout. So, you know, just, just you, you'll be okay. Eat, eat, drink, and, you know, do what you want to do. Give me some more questions. Question is, cardio on an empty stomach in the morning, good idea or bad idea? I used to always do my cardio on an empty stomach in the morning. More recently, I found that, because <clears throat> there were some times where I, maybe I didn't have time or I, uh, for whatever reason, I said, well, I'm going to do it tonight. And I noticed that after having more food in me during the day, when I would do my cardio, I'd sweat a lot more and I'd be a lot hotter. I thought to myself, huh, I wonder if that's because you know, my metabolism is up more versus in the morning, you're on an empty stomach, everything's kind of, isn't really going yet. <clears throat> Getting ready for the Arnold and the Flex this past year, all my cardio was I would have one meal first <clears throat> and I would do the cardio after that. And I felt like it gave me a superior result. I would sweat a lot more during it. I was able to go a lot harder. Um, Again, kind of going back to the whole thing of, you know, sometimes doing more. I don't want to give anybody the wrong idea, but when you could do, when you could eat more, do more cardio, you'll get a better result versus eating less or being on an empty stomach saying, well, you know, I won't have to go as intense with the cardio. You're better off eating more food and going more intense. You get a lot more out of it. Anybody got more questions? question is you go in you have a killer workout next day you're beat you feel like shit do you train I don't know typically like if, if you really feel like you're shot I would say no definitely not don't train but sometimes you'd be surprised how you know the times where you don't feel like you should go to the gym you go in you're like oh my workout's gonna suck I didn't get a lot of sleep last night um, you know, I'm, I'm feeling tired, this, that, and the other thing. And you, got like a, you have like a fucking record setter of a workout. So sometimes it's tough. It's tough to tell. But you always got to just make a judgment call and really go with your gut feeling. It's just like, you know, you're training and, uh, you know, you got a buddy there helping you force reps. Now, he could, he, you know, he could help you through probably 10 more, but you got to make a judgment call in your head. 
if I do, you know, sometimes always doing more isn't better. If I do another one, is it going to hurt me? If I go to the gym today feeling like crap, am I going to be more likely to get injured? You know, this, you know, my, uh, say my, my shoulder feels funny. Should I go to the gym? Sometimes you find I go, I work through it, and it actually helps it. It helps it recover. I feel better. Or you don't want to go and you don't want to uh, say to yourself, damn it, I knew I should have stayed home. I went and I injured myself. So it's really just a, it's, it's a judgment call, but you know, it's kind of a roll of the dice too. But the thing I would always recommend is just follow your gut. Anybody got some questions? I'm sorry? Say it again? The question was, what do my sets and reps look like? And I'm going to be honest, I hate that question. <laughs> because I think it's important for everybody to what I do, what my sets and reps look like, or <clears throat> what my diet looks like is really pretty irrelevant to everybody else. If, if I knew what Jay Cutler does in the gym or what he eats and I copied it, what is that going to do for me? Everybody has to, everybody has to do things that make sense to them. You have to go in the gym. If I could go in the gym and I do 20 sets for a body part, but maybe you go in and you do that, you might not feel good doing that. It might, it might do you more, more harm than good. When you're training as hard as you possibly can, going to failure, um, you're going to find that less is more. You don't need a lot of sets. I used to do a ton of sets. You know, when I was... 15 years old, I could spend three hours in the gym, you know, doing set after set of biceps or, you know, chest. As I've gotten older and my training has improved and I actually know what the fuck I'm doing, I can't train for more than an hour. I'm shot. My body's beat. And it's not just because I'm getting older. It's because I'm training that much harder. So everybody kind of has to come to that on their own. What's right for them? How much to eat? What to eat? You know, foods that sit well with me might not sit well with somebody else. Everybody has to come to their own conclusion as, as to what's best for them. But since you asked, um, sets and reps, it could be anything from, uh, you know, five sets per body part. There's days where I go in, I do like two sets on the leg press, a few sets of squats, and I don't know, maybe some extensions. Not a whole lot of sets, but I'm wrecked, totally wrecked because of the way I'm doing it. Or there's days where maybe I go in and I train arms and I say, well, you know what? I just feel like, uh, you know, doing more volume today. So it's, it's always changing. And um, anything can work. When you look back at some of the greatest bodybuilders in history, so look, look at the Mr. Olympias, for example. The way that Jay trains is totally different from the way Ronnie trained, totally different from how Dorian trained and Lee Haney all trained completely different, all fantastic champions. So, you know, it's different for everybody. You gotta find what works best for you. Anybody? The question was, he lives in a town where there's not a lot of access to fresh fish and he eats a lot of tuna and tilapia. I wouldn't eat tilapia a farm-raised fish. I wouldn't eat any fish that's farm-raised. If you look at, if you look at animals, and you consider, if you consider yourself. You know that you are what you eat, right? You know that the foods that you eat, that you select, dictate the quality of your composition, how healthy you are, what you look like, right? Same thing goes for any other animal. If you feed, um, you know, these farm-raised fish, they're growing them in, you know, uh, these farms, and they're feeding them chicken byproducts or you know all sorts of think corn things that fish are not meant to eat the composition of the fish is going to be unlike what it's supposed to be whereas you know fish are typically healthy for you have anti-inflammatory properties it's going to be the exact opposite so i wouldn't encourage anyone to eat any farm raised fish whether it's salmon tilapia catfish anything else you're always best off sticking as close to nature as possible uh, tuna maybe you want to watch because it's a larger fish and larger fish feed on a lot of smaller fish and that's where all the the mercury builds up 
versus smaller fish that are eating a lot of, you know, algae or, you know, all little things in the water. They suppose, from what I understand, you don't have to worry so much about the mercury level. Um, but, you know, you don't have to eat fish. You know, if, if you like chicken, eat chicken. Um, you know, beef, turkey, anything can work. If you, if you like dairy and dairy makes you feel good, eat dairy. Um, you know, there's all sorts of stuff out there. Anybody got any more questions? What kind of cardio do I think works best? And again, I think that's a, an, individual, an individual thing. For myself, I found that not high intensity, I wouldn't go out and start running, but I think that just walking on the treadmill, you know, for an hour, I don't think is doing a whole lot for you. I think you got to, you know, at least be breaking a sweat. You got to be huffing and puffing a little bit. And whether you like, you know, the treadmill is the treadmill's good, but I like it on an incline. Then you involve more muscles. You involve your glutes more, your hamstrings. Um, the step mill is great. You're using a lot more muscle to do that. So your resting metabolism will be effective, po affected positively. You know, don't forget, when you're doing cardio, you're not just looking to burn calories then and there. You want to have an effect on your resting metabolism, which is why weight training is so good. Because even though, yeah, you're burning calories when you're in the gym, once you leave, it takes a lot to recuperate all that. So, you know, you're, you're burning all sorts of calories recuperating what you just broke down in the gym. Same goes for cardio. You know, if you really want to get the most out of it, use some intensity. Because then, even after the cardio is over, you're still going to be burning more calories. More questions? The question is, do I think it's better to have BCAAs post-workout or a protein shake? Um, I don't really like having protein shakes post-workout. I don't, I mean, protein shakes for me, I like to have them if I can't have a meal. They're, they're a good option. They're, it's better than having nothing. But if you are, you know, if you said to have uh, BCAAs or a protein shake, I would definitely opt for the BCAAs. Typically what I do is I'll have a carb drink, either a Gatorade or Universal makes an EAA Nitro, which is like 35 grams of dextrose plus aminos. That, and I'll have that with a couple packs of Nitro post-workout. And then like 15 minutes later, I have a meal. Um, people say, oh, well, a meal after training, it doesn't digest as quickly as a, a protein shake and da, da, da. that's bullshit. Um, you'll, digest, you'll digest the meal in time before you start wasting away. We got more questions? The question is, is about progression of weight, you know, as you're training, how much, how much stronger should you hope to be, you know, uh, say from year to year? I don't know. Um, and it's not, I don't want to say it's not important because I do think that strength is important because I think that if you can move a greater amount of weight for more reps, I think you're only going to be, you know, there's no way anybody's going to squat 405 for 20 reps and have small legs. There are guys who, who, you know, could squat a big amount of weight for maybe one rep and not necessarily display a high level of leg development. But anyone who's training like a bodybuilder and moving a lot of weight, chances are they're going to have pretty good size. So I think that if you have a good training partner and say you're bench pressing, and maybe you could typically get eight reps on your own, but you have somebody to force you through three more reps and then do a negative. You just brought, you know, you just pushed yourself that, that much further beyond and overloaded the muscle. I mean, right, that's the reason why we train is overload. If we went and uh, worked outside all day, yeah, you're using your muscles, but you're never going to grow a bodybuilder's physique. The only way that you ever do it is with overload. You spend an hour in the gym training your back and accomplish a lot more than you could digging ditches all day because you're, ha you're overloading the muscle. So don't forget that. It's not about doing 20 sets. It's not about, um, you know, how much weight you are moving. It's about that overload. You have to give your body a reason, right, to grow more muscle. Right? Just like dieting, 
it's especially important to continue to train as heavy as you can. People that lighten the weight when they die, so I'm getting ready for a show, I'm gonna lighten the weight and do more reps. They get smaller, because now the body doesn't feel the need to hang on to that muscle, because they're training with lighter weight. You continue training as heavy as possible, you give your body a reason to keep that muscle, right? What else? I know you guys got some questions. Nothing? That's fine, because I'm going to go eat. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks, guys. I appreciate it, and hope that was of some use to you.